Hey guys, this is Mo again with a small quick tutorial. Um, I'm starting this on my YouTube channel where I kind of give people some advice on how to edit their photos on Photoshop. That's what I mainly use. And um, now if you take a look at my Instagram and scroll down, you will notice that I mostly love to shoot outdoors and natural light. I just love the feeling and the vibes that I get outdoors uh, for portraits. Um, I just love changing the backgrounds and uh, the location. This way, each photo will be unique in its own way. But now, for example, it's 20 degrees outdoors, it's winter time, it's snowing like hell, and I'm sitting home and I was like, you know what, what's better than making a couple minutes tutorial um, on a small tip that I've been using for a while. Now, when you're shooting indoors, like I said, um, if, you, if that's your style or uh, you just can't really shoot outside since we live in New York area and it's freezing in the winter. Like when I say freezing, it's like you can't really stay for a couple minutes. Um, you end up using, uh, let's say, studio backdrops or even shooting indoors on a plain wall or a plain paper backdrop. Um, and don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with just a simple color back background uh, let's say blue like this one here or even pink or black or whatever it is but it kind of gets repetitive it gets boring and you always want to try to change something in the photo so i figured out this way where um actually a lot of uh famous photographers such as uh sean archer um look at his page on instagram that's his actually his style he shoots indoors all the time and uh, his models are gorgeous but not only that um, the uh, vibe that he gets in his photos um, I actually asked him one time where do you get all these backdrops are they done in Photoshop so he was he was nice enough to actually uh, you know respond back to the comment and say yes it's actually done in the Photoshop so all the texture that he has in each photo is done in Photoshop and to be honest, like, let's say I thought about it first and I was like, okay, I'll buy a couple, but it, it gets expensive to keep buying new backdrops and they, especially the ones that they have texture in them. I actually ended up making it myself. Um, I'll show you guys some photos of that or you can see that in my Instagram. Um, I made a couple of them and, and they came up really nice, but still, um, it takes a lot of time, a lot of work. And again, you'll end up using it for a while. Uh, so today we're going to take a look at how to actually add a texture to any photo um, with a plain backdrop or a plain background. It could be a wall, it could be anything. So the first thing you have to do is open your image on Photoshop and then um, you have to be, um, you have to save uh, a couple or uh, a few of the background texture that you can find free online. Just go ahead and type uh, background texture and images and look for a few that you might like. Download them and I have actually downloaded a few right here. You can see um, I have some collection here and I'm gonna just click, drag and drop here in Photoshop. And this probably is one of my favorite backgrounds. Don't worry about the color. Um, we can change that at any time. So I'm just gonna drag this and uh, keep it the same size of the photo. And once I see that the sizes um, match, I can just click enter and there you go. Now we have it right here. Um, whatever the name of the photo is, it's gonna be named as a layer. Uh, I have it named as favorite. I'm gonna just change that to backdrop texture. And uh, from there, of course, it looks hideous now. Um, I'm going to just change the um, normal blending mood to screen. And there you go. Now, of course, this kind of gives you an idea on how it's going to look like. Um, we're going to be deleting all these um, middle points here where her body and face and hair. And that's when it gets a little bit tricky. You have to be a little bit... Um, kind of organized uh, and detailed on how to delete the middle part to keep all the edges. So it's basically just deleting the parts that you don't need. So we're gonna choose the eraser right here and click once on the photo, click okay. And then 
And then after that, you just have to uh, start uh, erasing after you have changed the, um, the size of your eraser to the point that you want. I would suggest that you start with the opacity of 50% and uh, somewhere around that you can also change the flow and start deleting uh, everything of the texture in the middle. Now we're going to go again in another round, but this is just going to give us an idea on how it's going to look like. So I'll just be subtle here. I'm using um, a touchpad pen, by the way, just in case you were wondering. It's a lot easier. Just don't use the mouse, guys. It's just a lot easier to use this. Now, once I get close to the edges, I'll try to be very gentle and not press too much because um, when you're using the touchpad, the, uh, uh, t the, the force that you apply to the pen actually makes a difference. Um, so right now I can get the vibe. Now, of course, the edges are gonna be in a separate flow right here. So I'm just gonna make the flow goes up a little bit more and maybe the opacity actually go down a little bit here uh, just because we're gonna be dealing with edges. Um, I'm gonna be a little bit quicker than usual. I can take care of it more when I'm doing it on my own for a different photo. I just don't want it to get too long for you guys. I'm trying to make these tutorials kind of quick and short and to the point where it's easy for you to follow. Now, delete, uh, editing a photo takes takes a while sometimes. A lot of people are asking me like, how long does editing a photo take with you? Uh, to be honest, there's not a set point. Each photo um, could be very involved. It could be 15, 20 minutes if, it, if there's not a lot of uh, face or skin retouch or eye retouch. And it could be up to an hour. Uh, like photos like this, there's a lot of skin showing and um, you know, uh, the the uh, camera is kind of close up to her, or the uh, I guess I was using the uh, uh, 105 lens here, so I'm fairly close to the model, and um, the details would be very obvious. Now, when you're shooting um, pretty pretty much like on a wide angle lens, and she's a little bit far away, you can get get away with not really retouching the face. You can just do some dodge and burn, and you'll be fine. So I guess we're pretty much in a good shape here as you can see i'm going back and forth especially towards the edges now at the end i'm gonna increase the opacity but before i do that um, i'm gonna click on off and on for this layer just to see how it looks like it looks pretty decent uh, i can see some areas here that hasn't been deleted yet and that's what we're gonna do here we're gonna make it even bigger and start deleting the middle you can see actually before we started, it wasn't 100%. Now we're gonna go 100, make it a little bit smaller here. Make sure that all the texture layer that we added is deleted from the face and hair because even if you can't really see it, it's just making your photo less sharp because we put it on screen. Um, it could be an easier way for you, I don't know, depends on your preference, to just set it back to normal. This way you actually, oh God, it looks hideous. This way you can actually look what you're deleting, but it also gets confusing because you can't really tell. Now, I, in this area here, I can't tell where the shirt ends and where it starts. So I'm just gonna put it back to screen and just keep deleting until I feel like I like it enough. Um, and it looks pretty cool. Now already the photo looks really nice. Um, I already like the way that the uh, teal color looked well, with, with this texture that I added. It's very subtle texture, you can see very simple, nothing crazy going on. If you add something crazy, it might be obvious and show up and you don't wanna do that. Um, looks like we have done a fair job. I'm gonna make it very small here. Okay, now we're gonna turn it back off and on. And uh, I think there's a little bit left here by the hair area. You can be very subtle with it. Um, even if you feel like there's a line that's kind of obvious, what you can do now, what we're gonna do, I usually bring the, bring the opacity, drink? Why have I been drinking? <laughs> bring the opacity down a little bit. And uh, this way, I think it looks pretty cool. What you can do also is click on Control 
or command U. And if you needed to add any color in it, now actually we've been using screen, so I don't think the color is going to change. Right, the color is not changing. But what we can do is change the lightness and darkness in this. You can control the background lightness and darkness here. It's very useful. You can actually mask it and use it in a group. Sometimes I like to put this in a group and just use the same mask from, from um, the group and apply more than one texture and see which one I actually like better. Sometimes I mix more than one or two uh, texture. So in this way, I don't have to do the same process all over again. I can just use the same mask, layer mask that I created on the whole group. So right now, uh, there's another thing. If you want it to be a little bit darker, you can just make it uh, you know, double or triple. I don't think this looks good, so I'm just gonna delete the last two layers that I did. But yeah, I think it looks pretty good. I definitely like the subtle addition that I added to it. Uh, it's a personal preference, of course. Um, we can also apply this to different photos. Uh, for example, this photo right here, it wasn't shot on a backdrop, it was shot on um, just a plain wall right here. And this is an example of what I did here. I actually created a group mask and then added one, two textures. You can see here, I just turned it off and turned it on and then you can turn off the whole thing and it works pretty cool. I mean, I like the feeling that it's giving me better than just plain wall. I mean, sometimes it's okay, but why not? And here's another example right here, same thing. This shot was on a plain wall. You can take a look here. You think it's probably just the backdrop that's kind of close to the wall um, or a wall that was pin painted this way. It's actually just the texture, same way. It's pretty cool. I definitely love these uh, small tricks that you can add to the photo to make it kind of unique. I really hope that you uh, liked it and I hope it's helpful for you. Um, take a look at my Instagram, scroll down, uh, leave a comment and say, hey Mo, I love this photo. I don't know how you did it. Can you show me how you did it or can you make a tutorial? If I got enough comments and I felt like uh, a lot of people were asking about this photo in particular or this style in particular, I'm definitely going to make a, a tutorial on it. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. It's a fairly new channel. I'm just starting it just because I feel like um, I'm at a point where I want to share my experience and uh, everything that I collected over the years on um, photography, videography, Photoshop edit, and uh, maybe in the future Lightroom edit as well. So that was it for today. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye now.